Today I'm in the wood yard, I'm putting a brake controller on my truck. Here we go. So today my son is here and he's gonna help me put a brake controller in my truck because this trailer weighs 10,000 pounds when it's loaded and I've been just using my truck brakes for a very long time now and it is time for me to have a brake controller so I can actually use the trailer brakes. So we're gonna get busy right now, we're gonna go put it in. Here we go. So this is the kit that we're gonna be putting in. It is a Prodigy P3 Tekasha, something like that. Uh, this is what's recommended. This is the good stuff apparently. Um, but it's a wiring harness and the brake controller we're going to put in right now. So my mechanic is entering the vehicle right now. This is my son and he put this into his vehicle, the same one. Yep. And uh, he also has a Toyota. Tekanosha, that's yes. how you say it? Yes, Prodigy okay. P3. I also have a, a Toyota truck. Well, not a truck, SUV. It's over there. Um, but... There it is. Yes, okay. but basically, uh, I did a bunch of research. The Prodigy kind of came out as the easiest to use and the most moderately priced. Because, I mean, if you want to spend a bunch on a brake controller, you can. I think this kit, when you got yours now, I think was like 175 or 178 I think like 180 something after tax and, and free shipping. eTrailer.com, love their stuff, great videos. It's actually how I know how to install this. Um, I wound up getting it because I can get the wiring harness. There's no splicing. You can uh, unplug it and plug it in. And actually, when we're done, I'll go show you my setup over there. But this one kind of came out as the best option. Easy to use. Um, you know, if you want to use the wiring harness it comes with, you can do this if you want to splice stuff. Otherwise, if I remember correctly, because it comes as a kit, the wire itself is, I think, 17, 18 bucks. And this is plug and play then. It's a lot easier. Plus, if you want to change the harness or take the harness with you, when you go to a different vehicle, you can take it with you. Because, like, for example, the harness with this has been the same since this platform was refreshed in 2015. But nice little controller. I don't know how we're going to mount it yet. I got to figure that out. But basically, the wires and everything are right behind this. And if you had a 2020 or newer Tundra, they come with a, tra uh, a brake controller from the factory, an OEM right. one, A actually. lot of them do now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, because they realized, oh, people probably tow stuff with trucks. Yeah, and this is a 2015. Yep. I've got 206,000 miles on it. And up to now, I've been pulling a many trailers yep. without brakes. And yep. then I got my... Much to my behest. <laughs> <laughs> my, my past trailer, Trusty Rusty, they have that Mike now at Life of 906 has. That did not have active brakes, but my new dump trailer has active Electronic, brakes. Electronic, not hydraulic. Yes, yep. yes. Yep. And I just bought a new cargo trailer, and that has electronic, electronic brakes. Yep. So And this will all work with that. Right. I figured it's time. I just yep. do it right. And uh, hauling bigger loads is just safer to have actual yeah. brakes on the trailer. So Well, and the reason I have mine is because I tow my father-in-law's camper, as well as his boat. And the best boat and camper are the one you don't own but borrow and do the maintenance <laughs> yeah, on. That's the best way to own one. Um, because that, with my foreigner, can tow 5,000 pounds, 500 pound tongue weight. It has electronic brakes. The camper's 4,000 pounds wet. Uh, we don't fill it with water when we take it. But you want to have brakes at that point just for safety. So that's when I had done the research and gotten this. And it works really well. It has sway controller. You can have uh, different profiles for different trailers. So actually, it's something we'll set up. I didn't know your cargo trailer had that. You can have different profiles for how you have the brake gain set. Right. So you can flip through. And you can say, okay, I have the dump trailer today. The brakes will be calibrated to that. I have right. the cargo trailer. And that way, you have the right proportional braking for it. Um, the one thing also, when we mount it, uh, we need to make sure it's parallel with the direction of travel because it does have that sway control to try and help. Oh, the vehicle okay. also has it, as does mine, to try and maybe independently break corners mm -hmm. if you have kind of a tank slapper situation on. So, okay, yeah, we'll Sounds get started. Good. Okay, step into my office here, but you know, also you're kind of dirty, so don't sit because <laughs> you know, as you might, uh, you guys probably can't see the fine details, but his truck gives me uh, hives. <laughs> so with my setup, what I did, because my wiring harness is actually right underneath over here, I had my brother-in-law actually, he's got a 3D printer. I had him 3D print this because I'm me and I'm anal retentive and I did not want to actually mount it and put self-tapper screws in here and mount it because A, also with me getting in and out, my knee would hit it because I got the seat all the way back because I mostly leg. Um, I didn't want it there. Plus. There's airbags, and uh, your truck also has that. There's a knee airbag there for frontal collision, and I didn't want to mount it there either. 
So for mine, I have the wire. It goes up underneath the dash. I zip tie it and I just, you know, cut the zip tie when I'm done with the trailer. But I have it go right here in the cup holder. And I had them kind of size the platform here to fit. That way it doesn't, you know, move around. And plus, you know, this isn't in the way because when you're driving, you know, it's back here and drive. Yeah, right. So I can, you know, if, if I have a sway condition or something, it's right there. You can easily get to it because you want to have easy access because if you have a situation where you need to pull the trailer back you want to be able to do that find it and use it which is also the reason i picked this controller because it's very easy to use you just grab that and you can go full lock if you want or however much you want to do it you can adjust it's right there so then i can also just take it out which i had to make it fit you know kind of tight that way right. it doesn't move around and this is the reason i went with the harness for the you know couple you know 17 18 bucks or whatever because it's just this part and I, didn't, I just have a ground I just screw it onto down there, plug the harness in, but then also I can just take it out. And so now I don't have any wires or anything else in there. So this is what we 3D printed. It's just hollowed in there. And you can just screw that on. Nice. Put in the cup holder. So we'll go and get yours going. So to also kind of have the same thing I just showed him in my truck here, so it's not in the way, because again, right here is that airbag right here, SRS knee airbag. Um, we want to make sure it's all the way. Plus, here's your TPMS, your tire pressure reset button. We don't want to have uh, anything in the way of that so you can get to it. The wires, again, are all behind here, so we'll run the wire down. But what we're thinking, and I'm just going to verify, is we'll basically mount it right here. So it's still pretty easy to reach. And there's not, I don't think there's anything for the self-tapping screws that would go that deep to hit anything, but we'll verify that before we start. So you just have it right there. It's pretty easy within reach, you know, not that far. You can get to it, and it's still going parallel with the direction of travel. Sounds good. All right, so we're going to take our wiring harness here and plug it in. I just take these plastic trim tools, that way you don't gouge it up. Not that, you know, he would necessarily care. His interior is immaculate. <laughs> but kind of break it loose there, and then actually you'll kind of want to film from up there. In here, this is the wire, that white one right there. So I'm just actually going to unplug it. We'll fish it down. And I'm going to fish this, let's see if we can see it on camera here. Fish this up. You can, I can see it in the shot. Fish this up through there and plug it in. All right, so basically they just put that in there as a placeholder to keep it. But now I'll fish that back down. I need a smaller arm. <laughs> There, so now we're plugged in. Put this back in place. There. So, I don't know how we're gonna mount that just yet. We need to find a ground for it, but we can plug it in. So even with the truck not on, it lights up. Uh, I think just because of the door. Yeah, so right now it'll say no trailer connected. Oh, okay. It goes to sleep. I remember what it was in the settings. I changed mine. I mean, I also, because I have mine in there only when I'm towing. But there's something in the settings I remember about when it goes to sleep. But yeah. But right now it's not going to say anything because there's no, as it says here. Oh, I can change it. Confirm. Yeah, I know there's no trailer right now. 14 is that's like maximum. maximum. Yep. And so what do you find is the numbers you want for what weights or don't you know? It's dependent on each trailer. Like when I told the camper, I'll usually have, I usually have like my, my brake gain set at about three or four when I'm just towing on a flat surface, yeah. just so that I have some assist and it's, it's proportional too. So the more you push on the pedal, the more you get from this. It's not just a set amount. So you'll actually see as you're braking, and we'll do a, a video going around the circle here. When you actually brake, you'll see the number go up and then you set it to kind of like a maximum. Got so it. you don't want to have it be full on lock, obviously. You don't want to, every time you put more than 50% pressure on, have the trailer go full lock. That's not good right. either. Your right elbow. Yeah, yeah and see, this, this, so. is, uh, this is why <laughs> I don't understand how he lives this way, but I get it. It's a work truck. I... All right, so 
we got our wiring harness and actually here give me the people so we have our wiring harness run in here i have a light if you want it you can see okay i put the ground behind the uh air outlet here because that grounds to the body there i gotta cut my zip ties yet we ran it up underneath here i don't know if you can see but wire comes out here and this is just hvac behind here the tappers don't go that far so we're going to put the bracket there we'll mount it and we'll be done we'll give it a shot then all right so also just because i'm a little pedantic we got a washer here because this isn't a perfectly flat surface we want to make sure that we've got it flat put that right there just don't strip it yeah 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 i was about to stick some goodies in there to tighten it up and you're going to put another one on the other side? Yep. All right. Yeah, they include six self-tapping screws with it. But there's two machines, or sorry, there's actually four machine screws. You want to make sure you, you use the machine screw on the, right here, actually it's these right here. You want to make sure you use those on the sides to attach this. Do not use the self-tappers going into the unit. Yeah. That's, that's bad juju. So could you put more than two... Uh, self-tapping you could screws you could put four of them put two on each side i don't think we need to well it's as long as it's solid is all yeah yeah i can do a quick infomercial while i'm doing that for tool check plus all the tools you need one spot what's it called oh, it's wira tool check it's plus. A wira? yes it is nice i'm guessing somebody wants some wood well it's a wood person I don't think we need more screws. <laughs> All right, so now we got it mounted here. It pivots like this, but I'm gonna adjust this. So you can kind of loosen these up. They have a, a bite washer on them, so you can have it be lower if you want away from it, but I'm gonna try and tuck it in there. Yeah, yeah that, that's not too bad. And then we'll tuck this, we'll zip tie this up in there, but before we do that, Let's test it because uh, <coughs> I've done that before where you get it all pre-assembled and it doesn't work. All right, well, he's putting his many uh, pairs of glasses because glasses yeah. yeah. due to his poor aging vision <laughs> away. All right, well, he's cleaning up yet more mess. We've got it all mounted up here. Ran the wires underneath. And I zip tied the ground. The ground then is actually on the back side of this right here on the metal body ground everything plugs in up through there fish the wires in through here we could have gone through the panel but i didn't want to take it off so yeah. it's out of the way yeah it's, i'm fine all that matters to you know how i am function function over, over form. form yeah I, I all the time yeah. all i care about is function i don't care about the form so much and then on the bracket back here if i can get it to focus we put that washer on the back it's is low i mean it's level i mean i've seen yeah it looks pretty good, good actually from this angle it looks pretty good this way so the big thing is though here take the people you can easily as far as i mean granted he has terrible posture he kind of <laughs> sits like that <laughs> but how you should sit when you're mm -hmm. towing you can easily reach you can go full power if you need to or whatever it's all right there so good. let's test it out i'm gonna pull the trailer up over there I will say this is slightly nicer than Trusty Rusty. This is a, probably one of the nicest trailers you can get, I think. I think it's pretty awesome. Okay. How much we got in here right now? 
What do we actually? What do we got in here? So right this now? is a load of wood that I split last night. Type of wood? Or yesterday? There is ash and some maple, but mainly ash. It's all tree service wood, and this is. <gasps> you mean free? Free wood, wood exactly. All caps. So <laughs> weight wise, um, this is a little over. So I can, we should be able to calculate this. This is a well, little. We'll measure the tongue. I got my tongue weight scale. Yeah, too. we can do that. This is a little over two face cords. So I would say it's it's probably it's. It's not quite a full cord. Um, if, it's, if this was level, it would be a full cord. So, and a full cord of green wood is going to weigh about 5,000 pounds. So I'm just going to say this is 4,000 pounds of, that's a good idea. This is 4,000 pounds of wood plus the trailer weight. The trailer is like 2,400 pounds. So there's like 6,000 pounds here. So it'll, okay. be a, it'll be a good test. Yeah, I mean, it's, that's like towing yeah. a, a, like a, what, 23, 24 foot travel trailer. Yeah, and, and it, this is Sunday today, so there's no traffic, there's nobody here, so we're gonna be able to go around my circle here and do a little test with it and see how it works. So it's gonna be a, a great, great time to do this. And I'll get to learn how it actually works. So we'll hook her up. Good, forward. Yeah, okay. Yeah. A little bit forward, you were good when you let off it. Uh, it's, it'll go on. If you're within an inch, you can get it on usually. Okay. But me and the people, we see a different angle than you see right now. Yeah, I know. <laughs> see the magic? Uh, <laughs> safety last. <laughs> oh, this still might not go. Oh, yeah, it's just going to make it. So I got built it. That's all the way. Oh, it's just, it couldn't have been. I mean, it was literally as, as tight as it could go. Yep, plug in your seven pin. We're going to need that. Yeah, I just do that. Yeah, we were just talking. I, I've had this conversation with a lot of people that trailering is one of those things that should require. I mean, you're Mr. Should require, small government, but uh, there should, should be a class. Classes, <laughs> because when you first start towing, you don't know Jack. Yeah. And I've had lots of near misses with uh, trailers. I had a trailer once, the class broke off one of a railroad track because I had too, ba too much back weight and it actually broke it off and came loose and I was dragging it down the road had to pull over and a couple times I had it where it was swerving because I had too much back weight I had lights not working I had just all kinds of stuff that can go wrong so yeah let's and go. it's and when it comes loose there's no one driving the trailer no no one teaches any of this yeah. stuff they're just like you're on your own yeah so yeah there should be classes on weight on weight distribution how to load it when to load it how to secure your load what you can and can't tow, what weight your vehicle can actually handle, different hitches. I mean, there's so much to learn about trailing and most people are clueless. And I was clueless when I started. It was kind of a, as I went thing, I've blown tires out, I've had axles go out, I've had bearings go out. I, I just, I've had everything you could have happen. So let's go do some towing. All right, so we got her all hooked up. Let's see what we get. All right, so right now we can see here, trailer one profile, boost level one. If I want to here, I can turn that all the way on, all the way up to full pressure on those brakes. The boost, there's a couple different things you can have for it. Basically, there's three predefined settings of no boost, where you don't want to have it actually boost the brakes when you're uh, having that proportional braking going on. My guess, your truck, your curb weight of your truck is right around 4,900 to 5,600 pounds. I don't know exactly for this trim because you don't have, you know, leather heated seats. All so stuff it's that just under weight. five. Yeah. yeah, it's about five. So approximately the same weight as the vehicle would be boost one. Your trailer right now, about 6,000 pounds. So probably boost two. We'll start on boost and one. And that's what I'll use most of the time when it's loaded, but when it's unloaded, then boost one. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. one or two is all I'm ever going to need. Yeah, and we'll we'll try it out, see how it feels, yeah. and you can get a feel for it. Okay. Right now, nothing on the brakes here. Just tap the brakes just a little there. Oh, I can hear them. They got some rust on yeah, it. Yeah, you can hear a little. People might not be able to hear that, but oh, we can yeah. hear it. <laughs> well, I mean, you probably you haven't used the nope, brakes on it yet, so ever. they've probably got some rust I'll build try up. Try again. Oh my God, that is a huge 
huge difference. Oh well, yeah. Because I've you had two more axles of braking. Uh, yeah, that's huge. Because I I know when I tow normally, because I don't never use the brakes on my old trailer or this one, I had no brakes at all. So I would have to. You got to always plan extra distance for stopping. But I could feel it. It's like holy smokes. That's big. That's a big difference. That's what everybody's told me. That's what Tony said too. Made a dramatic your best difference. Friend, Tony. Or your, your old, old best, best friend, friend or whatever Tony. you're going to. He's not my best friend anymore. Well, He's my old best friend. <laughs> He doesn't provide Elcons. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, right now, uh, I'll get around the corner. I'll get it up to about 25 yeah. at least. I was gonna say I'll also have you do the manual application if you had a swerve thing, so you know how that feels like. Because yeah. I did have a scenario. I was going over. So I live a little bit north of here in Wisconsin. You're going up to Door County. Okay. So a, here's 20. Five right here. Yep. So how hard do you want me to hit them? Just, just regular, just regular application. Regular braking. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. That's boosting at about the right amount. Because you don't want to go full lock. That is unbelievable. I can. I mean, worth so, the 175 oh. bucks. <laughs> well, I want to be able to stop. Yeah. Stopping is good, Safety especially first. when you got a trail a load full of wood. Yeah, this yeah. is nice. So, like I was talking about, where I was going over uh, I-43 bridge in Green Bay with the high winds, kind of like if you go over that bridge in Duluth, if you have a sway gonna, condition on. I'm going to do it again here at okay. 25, and I'm going to go hard. Wow, that is amazing at how fast it stops. Yeah. I mean, I never, it was always pushing me. It was basically like you're going downstairs and you got a 500 pound person leaning on you before yeah. now it's or a six thousand pound person <laughs> well in this case wow <laughs> so i was talking about the sway condition so just get on the straightaway here and just coast yeah. so let's say you're in a sway situation yeah. you come off the power uh -huh. if you were to go and grab here you feel that holy smokes yeah i'm not touching the brake at all so that's actually the trailer pulling us right and backwards. if you're in a if you're in a tank slapper you don't want to go full lock don't just crank you just want to give it. it a little bit yeah you just want to give it a little bit oh there i just cranked on it yeah so basically, just give it a little. You just bit. give it a little tug, and it'll. Because basically, think about it this way: if you're kind of swaying back and forth like yeah. that, it will level it out. It's never going to happen because I'm not going to have it loaded improperly. Well, it's not just that <laughs> though. It I mean, I had that when I was on the bridge when we had 60 mile an hour winds with a yeah. flat sided travel trailer. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not going to have that. You don't have the height or the surface area as much with this. You know, you're much denser and you know more compact. Oh yeah. You barely and it, touch it's it. really it's for emergencies. You don't you right. don't want to do that all the time. It's it's mainly just to help get it under control if you have a sway situation. Yeah, it works. We'll do do one more hard break once I get around the corner. Up I here. mean, boost two might be overkill for you. Yeah, I think it would be. I think it would be because there's quite a bit of weight in there. Well, you also have. Here we go. Yeah. Yeah, that's like not even having a trailer on there. Yeah. Awesome. Well, and the thing is, you also have pretty big, like we were talking earlier, you have 14 inch rotors front, almost 14 inch rotors front and rear, yeah. and they're pretty thick and they're dual piston. The Tundra's got pretty big brakes. Other yeah. trucks kind of have, uh, from 2007 on, have gotten bigger brakes now too. Right. So, you know, uh, when this was originally came out, I think this is the, the third version of this, that boost might not be for having the larger brakes on there but yeah it, it feels like it's braking pretty good yeah i can just coming in the corner just give it a little bit of brake and i can feel it's yeah definitely should have did this about uh seven years ago i was gonna say when you bought the truck yeah <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah well your next your next tundra okay i'm not i'm gonna talk you out of that 2500 <laughs> your next tundra will have that integrated controller Let's from see. the factory anyway which is nice because then you don't have to screw anything oh yeah in. this is like the only fear i have is it came to my mind it's going to change my driving habits to where i'm less cautious because i have the uh, brakes you're and old I'll, and you drive slow now so well, <laughs> you're not young you getting speeding tickets okay so i'm going to stop on this gravel here going about 15 miles an hour wow that's on gravel it just stops instantly that's that's impressive okay Okay, so what Bryce is doing is he's filming me now and I'm going to do full application with just the manual brake controller with my finger. I won't use any foot brake. I'll On the use, truck, nothing. I'll use, right, I'll use just the trailer brake. We'll see what happens here. I'll get up a little bit of speed and I'm just going to crank on it here. Yeah, it's, it's, it stops. It stops everything. So 
Yeah, that works pretty nice. Okay, so we got the brakes on. So the last thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna show you he's got a trailer tongue scale. So we're gonna just see how much tongue weight we have with this wood on here. And obviously it's gonna be heavy because we've got half a load of wood in here. We've got, well, half, or more than a half. We've got a, a pretty good size bunch of wood in there, but yeah, and I'm guessing the this tongue weight to a thousand pounds. I'm guessing it's gonna be at least that, if not more. <laughs> well, no, it. Well, you might be surprised. There's a lot of weight in there. You're, gonna be, you ain't, you're not going to be able to go low enough, I don't think. Oh, let's just start. Now you're just getting to it. See? Look at that. There you go. It's off. I'm off the ground, see? 700. Show the people. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. It's off the ground. 700 pounds of tongue weight. Yep. Which yeah. is... Uh, and this scale, uh, it's about 145. Again, I got it when I was towing that travel trailer because me being closer to my, my max tow, I want to have that accurate. I want to know. I check it before I start out. That way you know if you have everything loaded properly. Granted this, you know, make sure you have some more to the front. You know, just don't have it piled up in the back. Yeah, but yeah I'd say 700 here. Yeah. It's not going anywhere else. Here, I'll take the weight off here. Yeah, 700 pounds. That's so how big. much was this? Where'd you get it? Because people are going to ask. <clears throat> link in the description below <laughs> not a sponsor um, again as with any of the videos you'll see me and I'll make sure or all of them actually I make sure that we put the product in the description with a link um, the trailer brake control and all that I'll put a link to e-trailer uh, this one actually I think I wound up getting it from walmart.com because I didn't want to give Jeff Bezos money um, <laughs> but uh, I, this is made in the US of A, if I remember correctly. But yeah, it's just, they make them in different sizes. This is the thousand pound. Vista, California, it yeah. says. Not legal I don't think it's made in California, but that's where the company is. The wow. box is made in the USA. Um, they make them in different weight classes. This is the thousand pound. They have a 2,000, a 3,000, and a 5,000 when I was looking for just different uh, tongue weight measurements. They have digital ones too, but I just wanted one that was simple, you know. Yep easy to use it's just it's just a hydraulic cylinder in there that just has a, right. a valve to measure it out nice so, works nice so there you go folks i have now have brakes on my trailer uh, my cargo trailer will be able to brake i'll be safe at going down the road with a big load so that's it for today and to do poke the buttons if you like what you just saw i've got over 800 videos on my channel you need to go watch and we're going to put a video right over there you can take a check at that one that's a good one to watch tomorrow morning we'll be back at 5 30 a.m with another video for you Good night, Irene. Mm -hmm.